Hi, I'm Dan Rosenstark with MIDI Designer and I'm going to be showing you some of the new features of 1.3.5 and 1.3.6. Um, opening MIDI Designer Pro, would you like to see a tutorial? Not right now. And I'm just going to add a connection because otherwise we see this no connections thing on the top right, which is great and very useful. Um, but we don't want it in this tutorial. So, um, I'm just going to reset this page to the default template. And one of the things that you notice immediately about 1.3.5 is that this properties box goes over to the right side. So that's a pretty interesting thing. It goes over to the left side if I'm adjusting this page. And the reason is that um, otherwise you always run into various problems. So let's say that I create a knob and I want to look at the knob properties. Now the thing before was that it would pop out somewhere near the knob and then the keyboard would come out and it would have to jump up. Uh, we don't have that problem anymore. Now it's high enough generally for the keyboard in English. I realize that this is not a great international solution. This properties box will still get out of the way if your country's uh, or your language's keyboard is too high. So anyway, um, this shows up on the other page. That's a nice thing to have. Um, so going back, I'm um, going to bring up default control, a uh, default template on this page. Go back here, uh, reset page to default template. Um, we're just going to use unused CCs. And these colors are actually pretty interesting. Um, sometimes they can be pretty terrible or pretty nice. It depends on um, your luck. And now you can try your luck for real using random color texture and LED. So when you do this, what you'll notice is, wow, some of these look good. And there are two reasons for this. One is the new LED control. So you can actually choose uh, the LED for all the controls on the page. And this is more striking, actually, when we have some on buttons. So um, let's just do that and go back into design mode and actually get this out of the way again and uh, do random c uh, color texture LED and you see some pretty interesting things um, just coming out in terms of colors um, they may be beautiful, they may be useful um, so that's one of the uh, things that happened aesthetically in 1.3.5 and obviously another one as I've shown in other videos and I've mentioned a lot is the aspect ratio free controls this looks pretty terrible you'll think but of course when I let go it renders um, otherwise this was blowing up on iPad 3 of course uh, on the 2 and the 1 it actually worked fine but the new resolution uh, made it crazy so anyway now it renders late and um, one of the things that you get with these aspect ratio free controls is the desire to have long button labels and I didn't give you that in 1.3.5 uh, in 1.3.6 you have that now so now I can use a longer button label um, let's see how this works yeah and um, these labels uh, and this is from 1.3.5, these labels are adjustable in size separately. So they auto size to the control, but if you don't like that, you can choose your own size. And uh, the best thing here was that the sizes actually correspond perfectly, of course, across control. So a size uh, 3 label, if I want that size, if I go up here and I also use the size 3 label, I'm always good. So these match up perfectly. Well can tell that they're the same size font. Um, so that's one of the uh, things in 1.3.5, 1.3.6, or actually several. And now the new thing um, that I'm pretty psyched about because it's the first LFO type of thing that we'll be adding uh, in MIDI Designer, but it also gives you an indication of where we can go in terms of physics. Obviously it's not physics uh, yet, nor is it an LFO, uh, but it's a start. We're doing snap to uh, default values. So I'm going to go in here to this Spearmint control, uh, and I'm going to go to its advanced properties, and I'm going to bring its snap to default up and this goes all the way up to 16 seconds. I'm going to bring it down to something reasonable like 100 milliseconds. 
and uh, when I bring the control down, let me make this guy, uh, let me give him some stage here. Um, so when I bring this guy off his default value, come back in 100 milliseconds. So, and of course, the other controls, as some of you don't know, and it's not that well documented, uh, if I triple tap them with my finger, they will nod and return to their default values. So um, you've got that for the controls that don't, that are not snapping to the default. The other ones are always at their default, so there's no need to worry. And we can even do some big times. So, uh, sorry, advanced. Go up here. Um, 16 is a bit slow, but we'll go to 8. And when we go to 8, it snaps back nice and slow and uh, that corresponds to the number of ticks that you have um, so basically each frame is a tick so if I go here and I reduce it to uh, a smaller number of ticks like um, let's say 9 which is a good one for a lot of things like effects and so forth uh, bring it down to 0 and it's jumping and it's taking eight seconds to do it so these are pretty big jumps because the tick size is pretty large so and now it's back at 64 which is its center so that's uh, a wrap-up of some of the stuff that happened in 1.3.5 1.3.6 and if you look at the change log at mididesigner.com forward slash change log all one word you'll see the rest of uh, what's up there for 1.3.5 and 1.3.6. Um, I want to thank you all for your generosity. A lot of people have been sending in really uh, extensive or, or really uh, precise bug reports and making a, a great effort to replicate the uh, replicate problems or really specify features that they want or things that they want MIDI Designer to do. And the feedback has just been incredibly positive. Um, thank you everybody for the likes and for the buys and um, for uh, checking out MIDI Designer. Uh, thanks a lot. And and uh, I'll just keep updating it, and uh, we'll just keep moving forward. Thanks.